Welcome to the next tutorial about Fixed Networks, the computer mod for Satisfactory. And today we're talking about GPUs, screens, as well as user input and output with them. There are right now two different types of screens in the game. The first one is a screen module for the modular control panel. You can place it on there, take it as a module and then uh, use the reference in there to bind it to a GPU. But you can also take a large screen or dynamic screen which you can place on the side of a wall or a foundation. Size it up to any kind of size. I think the maximum value is 10 by 10. Just place it and then you can connect it uh, with a network cable to your network. If you want to draw something on a screen, you will need to use a GPU. Right now there is just the GPU tier 1 which allows you to render a two-dimensional uh, grid, a uh, character grid onto any kind of screen. You need to buy, uh, if you use GPUs, you need to bind a GPU to a screen. There, a, G a screen can only be bound to one GPU and one GPU can only be bound to one screen. If you want to get the reference of a GPU in your computer case, you will need to use the computer.getGPUs function, which returns an array of attached GPUs, because you can uh, put in any number of GPUs into your case. So let's take the first GPU. Store it in the GPU. If you have now additionally a uh, reference to a screen, you can then use the GPU's bind screen function to bind the screen to the GPU. And th with that you can then start uh, printing stuff with the GPU's interface. For example, you can use the set text function, which allows you to, uh, uh, to set the text at the given location on the screen. Uh, the screen's origin is in the upper left corner where the x-axis goes from left to right and the y-axis goes from top to bottom. And you can do use those two um, coordinates there to define the position you want to. After you write something to uh, with set text for example with a draw function nothing will happen on the screen because you first need to uh, because that one writes the data to a background buffer. You then need to use uh, the GPU's flush function to copy that background buffer to the foreground buffer which will then get actually displayed. We now got Hello World up there. You can also use the uh, escape characters like backslash n to move uh, to switch to a new line as you can see. And you can also use the um, backslash r um, carrier return to move in uh, to move back to the beginning of the current line so if we do that it goes into the new line and starts at the front with the world but you don't need for example backslash and you can also use the backslash up directly to move in the same line to the beginning as you can see it still keeps the old data so if you want to get rid of this you will need to override it for that, uh, the GPU implements a fill function. The uh, fill function takes again the, or, uh, the position where you want to start writing. And then the width and height of a rectangle you want to draw. So for example, let's take 20 by 20. And then it wants a string with, only, with a single character and all the characters in the given rectangle will then get set to that specific character. You can also use, for example, uh, width and height, uh, the size of a screen, that you can, for example, clear the whole screen. The position you use here with those X and Y coordinates is the upper left corner of the rectangle and not the center. If we execute this function now with, for example, a f, it will create a 20 by 20 large uh, rectangle of f's. As you can see here, each character of a screen, or in that case, this uh, the thing the GPU tier one renders, 
Cons uh, consists of a foreground and a background layer. The background layer is just a small, cust uh, a small own rectangle with a given color. The foreground is the character, and the character can also have a specific color. If you want to change the colors, you can use the GPU set foreground for uh, foreground, and the GPU set background functions accordingly. The, uh, those two functions take each of them four parameters. The first parameter is the red value from 0 to 1 of the color. The second parameter is the green value from 0 to 1. And th uh, the third parameter is the blue value of the color from 0 to 1. And uh, the fourth and last parameter is uh, the opacity and or the transparency of the given layer from 0 to 1. 0 is completely transparent, 1 is fully opaque. Same counts for, uh, for the background. The default background is transparent with black, and the default foreground is completely opaque with white. If we, for example, now use uh, this, it will completely use transparent as background and white as foreground for the following draw calls. It doesn't override the already existing ones, it only overrides the following ones. So for example, if I take now our F, place it up there, and after that we use now a different color, so let's for example say fully red in the foreground and opaque, and uh, let's take fully green and opaque in the background, and for that we only have a 10x10 10 10 grid of Fs. We will override only the 10x10 10 10 grid from the 20x20 20 20 grid with the new colors and the new characters. So for example, if we can take G. As you can see, the old ones stays, stay the same color, only the new drawn ones will have the new colors accordingly. You can also use the GPU's get width, uh, get size function to get the width and the height of the drawn character grid. And you can also use the set size function to accordingly set uh, your desired size. So this is uh, the dimensions of the character grid. And you can also set it with GPU.setSize width and height. So for example we take the width of 12 and the height of 1, set it and now it changed. This also causes the screen to adapt to the new character grid and makes the text to appear bigger. Because the screen's attitude is it tries, uh, it tries to view it as big as possible but as small as needed. So for example, if you now want to clear your screen, you can use the get size function to use get uh, to take GPU, set uh, GPU fill, take the origin or uh, the origin of the screen and the width and height value accordingly, and then use the space character and the default or the standard background you want, like I use now transparent and that will cause the screen to simply clear. The size you can set in uh, with uh, GPU set size is limited. This limit can be defined uh, by the GPU but also by the screen itself. It always depends simply on the implementation of the GPU. Since the GPU T1 makes a 2D character grid, that means uh, the resolution or the size of this 2D character grid can be limited by the GPU itself, but also by the screen. So for example, that one is, has one static screen size that causes it to have a static limit of characters you might be uh, able to display with the GPU tier 1. S uh, but for the large screen, you might be able uh, to have a different size, a uh, different amount of characters you can display depending on the screen size. You can also use the screen driver module for the computer allowing you to add a new screen tab to the UI of the computer. 
The input events you can use with the uh, with the, uh, the GPU tier one are like mouse input events as well as key input events. The big difference is key input events only work with a screen of this type, of a screen driver type, but mouse input events work for any kind of screen. If you want to get events for, or signals from the GPU now, which is bound to any kind of screen, right now it's still bound to the big screen, you can use again just simply event listen, uh, listen to the GPU, and then we can, for example, use a while true do loop to print all of the events it now receives. If we run this now, and we only just move with the uh, with the uh, with the crosshair over the screen, it will trigger a couple of mouse events. The first parameter is the X location, the second parameter is the Y location, and the third parameter is a, reg uh, is a bit registry of control keys you might have pressed while moving with the cursor uh, or with the mouse over the screen. This value doesn't change if you use it in, with an in-world screen like the screen of the modular control panel or for the dynamic in-game buildable screen, but that uh, value will work in a screen driver. The screen also reacts to right click and left click input, so if you look over the screen and now hit right click and left click, okay, actually left click and now right click, and as you can see, as you do that, it triggers a couple of signals of type on mouse down and on mouse up. The third parameter is again a uh, button registry, the same type as before, and the back, uh, button registry's first bit tells you if it is a left click or primary fire, and the second bit tells you if a, th uh, if a secondary fire or a right click got executed on top of the screen. As you can see, it works in world, but it also works in the screen driver. If you want to use the screen driver, you will need to use the computer's get screens function. Since the computer, uh, since the screen driver is not a network component and you can't access it with the component network, you will need to use that way to get the screen driver reference. Get screens also returns an array, just like get GPUs. So that means you need to make sure that you only get one instance if you then want to bind it to a screen. If we execute that and then go over to that newly created screen tab move with the mouse over the screen, you can see we again trigger all mouse move events. Same happens with clicking right or left. That again will cause on mouse up down events to happen. As already said, the screen will also take keyboard events. So if I now hit some input, uh, some keyboard keys, it will have emitted on key up and down events accordingly. The difference here is that uh, the first character, is, uh, the first parameter is the ASCII number of the character you actually typed in. The second parameter is the key number, so they might be different from keyboard to key keyboard. And the third parameter again is a, uh, is a but a control button registry as previously, which tells you if Shift, Control, or Alt got pressed. So, for example, if you want now to get the information if it was a left mouse, right mouse button click, or if you have if when a such an event like mouse input events or key input events occur, if a Control Shift Alt or CMD was pressed, you can use uh, the bitwise operators to check for the different bits. So the first bit is the left mouse, the second bit is the right mouse. Third bit is if the control was pressed, fourth uh, bit is if shift is pressed, fifth uh, uh, bit is if alt is pressed, and sixth 
bit is if CMD was pressed. If I run that code, now go over there. If I don't click anything, you will see nothing will get printed. If I hold shift, the mouse move event cause now a lot of shifts get printed. If I use, uh, if I now hold shift and then click, for example, left and right, you can see that we get right mouse, right mouse events with shift as well as left mouse events accordingly. I can also use control and alt for those moves. I can also press them uh, uh, at the same time and that will cause them to also get printed at the same time. For key input events or keyboard input events, as already said, the first parameter is the character in numerical uh, representation of the ASCII character. If you want now that as in string, for example, you can use the strings char function to convert this number we have now stored in char to a string of size 1 with the corresponding character. I am now typing Hello. And as you can see, it prints OK. I press Shift and then it prints Hello accordingly. Why it uh, prints two times? That's because we got a key down and a key up event accordingly. You can use this functionality now to create a very simple and straightforward text input field. So we initialize, for example, I with zero, and the, uh, that is now the location of the cursor, basically. Then we take GPU, set text, at I in the first row, to the new character. And after that, we need to flush the newly printed data. If we run that code now, go to screen, we can now say Hello, okay, I forgot something since I don't increment I yet. So how can we do that? Very simple, we just simply tell I to be I plus one. If you run that code now, go over there, we can now say Hello. As you can see, it prints now two times because mouse down and mouse up. Now we can simply filter that with a small little if e on key down then we do uh, this stuff so for example now as you can see uh, it's still bad we can do uh, we can change this again by simply clearing the screen how do we do that Simply we take width and height, GPU, get size, and then GPU, fill at the origin with width and height, a simple space. And we should not forget to flush. We run that, and then we go in there, and then we can type hello, how are you? You, but the RU is you can't read. But that's a very simple and straightforward input. That was about the basics or also advanced stuff of the GPUs and screens that you can now create in, uh, beautiful GUIs or just simple console inputs or whatever you might want. And next time we will cover uh, the codable splitter. I was Pedro from Code D from Spice, and I say bye bye until next time. And as always, keep coding!